So have you been wanting to get into video editing? Or maybe you're someone that currently video edits, but maybe you're looking to upgrade to a device that will work better and faster for you? If so, today's video is for you. Today I'm going to talk about my minimalist, favorite, best bang for buck video editing setup. This is the combination of hardware that I consider most powerful for the price. And powerful it is. It handles whatever I throw at it with ease, and it gets the job done quickly and efficiently. For example, here's what I've thrown at this setup. I've worked with 10-bit HEVC footage on a 4K timeline from GoPro action cameras, DJI action cameras, DJI drones, my Sony a7S III, and this setup handles it all. It doesn't bog down while editing or exporting. So today I'm going to outline two different configurations. The first configuration is going to be if you edit in one place and you don't need to be mobile for your editing. The second configuration is going to be for those of you that are mobile and want to edit in multiple different locations or perhaps take your editing device on the road with you. For the first configuration, I have the following. This is the Apple Mac Mini with an M2 Pro chip featuring 512 gigabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Secondly, I have a SanDisk 2TB Extreme Portable SSD drive. For this monitor, I have an LG 27-inch 4K monitor with a 98% sRGB color gamut. In addition, I have an Apple wired keyboard and mouse. Do note that Apple has discontinued their wired keyboard and mouse, but you can still buy these renewed. And if you want the Magic Keyboard and Mouse, those can also be purchased from Apple. But do note those do cost about two times the amount as the wired keyboard and mouse. Now, I personally like the wired keyboard and mouse. I feel like they work better. They're less buggy. You just plug them in and they're good to go but I have used the Magic Keyboard and Mouse, and those have worked well as well. I just find them to be a little bit less consistent. And finally, I have these Logitech wired speakers right here. The grand total for this configuration comes in at $1,940. So for less than $2,000, you can have a powerful minimalist video editing setup that enables you to edit both efficiently and quickly. That is what I call best bang for buck. Now, speaking of best bang for buck, let's talk about this desk right here. This desk is the Flexispot Standard Standing Desk E1. This desk and all accessories are from Flexispot. The two accessories that I got with this desk include this under desk drawer, as well as this cable tray. Now what I like about the drawer is it's just the right size to store little things that I need to store in there without taking up too much space and without getting in my way. And of course the cable tray back here is perfect because all of these accessories that I have as part of my workstation build, I can run all of the cables into there. There aren't cables hanging everywhere. It looks really neat. It keeps them out of sight and out of my way. And I love it how cost effective this desk is. Even if you're on a limited budget, you're still able to create yourself a comfortable and productive work study environment. Now this particular desktop surface is the bamboo design, and I love this bamboo. Not only is it environmentally friendly, but it's also very durable. And I love it that Flexispot has a 30-day risk-free return policy. With this return policy, you have nothing to lose. I definitely recommend trying out a Flexispot desk. So check out my exclusive link in the description below to purchase this desk, or to check out other great products on the Flexispot website. Now the second configuration I have here is geared toward mobility. And it's quite simple. This is the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro, including 512 gigabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now Apple has released the M2 chip, but a lot of retailers still have this 14 inch with the M1 Pro base model in stock. And currently they are regularly running sales for the price of $1,599 for this device. That is a fabulous price for this device. I've included some links in the description below for this device at retailers that I have seen offering that. These include Amazon, Best Buy, Costco, and a few others. Now you could get this same laptop right now with the M2 Pro, but it would cost you $400 more and it would cost you $1,999. The M2 Pro does offer some performance improvements. There are a few more cores on the chip and there are a few more cores for the GPU as well. And for this configuration, I do also recommend including that SanDisk Extreme 2TB portable SSD. It's a great and affordable way to add more storage to your MacBook Pro. If you were to choose 2TB of storage internally in this device, you would have to pay $600 more to Apple. 
but that two terabyte external storage cost a mere $150. It's tiny, it's really portable, it's easy to plug into the MacBook. The total cost of that configuration is $1,749. And of course, if you do want to connect to this MacBook Pro, to this monitor and the wired keyboard and mouse, you can do that as well. In order to do so, you just need a $20 USB-C to USB-A adapter. Plug it into your MacBook Pro here. You can plug in the wired keyboard and mouse that way. And you also can connect this monitor directly to the MacBook Pro because this MacBook Pro does have an HDMI port. So if you want a bigger screen to edit on, you can put the Mac into clamshell mode and you can edit that way. So next, I'm going to show you what you can expect with the editing experience on these devices. Now, both of these have approximately the same specs. The Mac Mini does have the M2 Pro and the 14-inch MacBook Pro has the M1 Pro, but otherwise they have the same amount of storage, the same amount of RAM. Now, since the M2 Pro is slightly more powerful than the M1 Pro in the MacBook Pro, I'm going to show you the editing experience you can expect on the MacBook Pro, since that one is lower spec. That way you have a minimum baseline to look at for the editing experience. Now I will note my favorite video editing software is Adobe Premiere Pro, and that is what I'm going to use on the MacBook Pro today to show you the editing experience. If you don't want to use paid software, Apple does include iMovie at no cost, and iMovie can do a lot of basic edits really well. In addition, you can also purchase Final Cut Pro for a one-time cost of $299, and that is also great software to use on the MacBook Pro. Adobe Premiere Pro is simply the editing software that I prefer for the most efficient editing experience. And I've got an assortment of video files in this folder right over here that are from the GoPro, my DJI drone, and my Sony A7S III. And all of these videos are 10-bit, and several of them are using an HEVC or other comparable codec, so they are not the easiest codecs to work with. We're gonna entitle this video samples and we're gonna to navigate to our location where those files are to create our project. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a 4K sequence. I've already got my presets saved here. And we're gonna utilize ProRes RAW for the editing mode in our codec Apple ProRes 422. Let's get that footage imported. I'm gonna select all of our clips right here and we're gonna import those. First clip, let's take a sequence from this DJI drone footage. Let's grab about right here to about right there. Drag it onto our timeline. It's gonna say that the sequence settings are different. That's because this drone footage was not filmed at 24 frames per second. That's fine. We're gonna say keep existing settings. Next, let's drag on some Sony footage here. This will be footage from the GoPro unboxing. And finally, let's grab some of the GoPro Hero 11 clips and let's drag those onto the timeline. These clips, several of these are in 5.3K, such as this one right here. So when I do that, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go down to set to frame size so we can make sure it sets it to the 4K. This was in that eight by seven mode on the GoPro. Fabulous mode, love working with it. And we've got a couple more clips I'm gonna select here to drag onto the timeline. So first thing I wanna do here is I just want to play this timeline so you can see how it operates. I have not done any rendering yet. So this timeline is just playing as is. Oftentimes, you have to render before to play smoothly with these types of files. As you can see, it goes right along nice and smooth. Go to the next clip. Since this has audio, you can tell if it's going smooth or not. Let's give it a play right here. With the Hero 11 Black. And then I'm going to go through the menus on the camera. Nice and smooth. I'm going to show no you problems the there. Menu Finally, let's take a look at the GoPro footage. This first clip was filmed in 4K 120. Look at how smooth that is. Not a bit of freezing or locking up or anything like that. You can just go smoothly through it. Check out the 5.3K HEVC clips. Also nice and smooth. There's rocks. Mm -hmm. 
Let's do this to slow motion as well. So for this clip, since I filmed it in 4K 120, and I'm on a 4K timeline, we can slow this down to 20% of its original speed. So I'm gonna do that. Now let's play it. Now I of course would wanna remove the sound here, so I'm gonna unlink that and clear that. And we'll mute these other tracks down here. So there won't be any sound with this, but I just wanna demonstrate how smooth and clear this is. No issues at all, not a stutter, not a jitter, nothing. Performs really smoothly and great. Let's drag this back and make sure that DJI drone footage is doing the same. Also doing great, no problems there. Now for this clip, let's do a quick reframe on it. Just confirm that it's gonna continue working as it should. So we're gonna bring in the scale a little bit here. I'm gonna bring it into about 75. And we're gonna reframe this how we want it here. And we're gonna reframe it up and down. So let's zoom in a little more here. And let's set the opening of the clip with those settings right there. Then let's have the conclusion of the clip end in a different place. Go back to the last frame of that clip. And we're gonna put keyframes here and we're gonna bring it up. Let's have it end right there. Let's go play that clip now. Look at that. Smooth, buttery, no jitter, no issues. No, me. Looking great. Let's also do some color correction on some of these layers. So on this one, let's do the auto. And let's do some on this one as well. And finally, let's do some on this one. Now let's try playing those just to see if it's the same experience. Same experience, nice and smooth, no problems. Play this one too to make sure. Our DJI Mavic 2 Pro footage, also nice and smooth, no problems there. Then our footage from the Sony A7S III, also nice and smooth, no issues. Unboxing. Let's go ahead to the GoPro footage, which is 5.3K HEVC. Do a color correction on each of those. Doing auto for the sake of time. Nice and smooth. No issues. And I will mention there aren't even fans running on this MacBook Pro right now. There's no fan noise at all. And the battery life is simply incredible on here. That's the other thing I love about these, their battery life with those M1 chips, really, really good. I can video edit for hours on just the battery power and it works great. Yeah, nice and smooth, no problems there at all. Let me just go to export now and show you how this looks when exporting. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go to File, Export, Media. And let's do, let's export this as sequence one. We're going to match the source here. So it's going to make it the full 4K. Render at maximum depth, use maximum render quality. We're going to go down here to bitrate settings. I want to set this at 56 and we're gonna send it to media encoder. All right, we're gonna click play to start the export. And for this about four minute clip here, it estimates export time at about a minute and a half or a minute and 40 seconds is what it started at. Really nice, look how quickly that moves along. And remember, this is the MacBook Pro, so this is less powerful than the M2 Pro Mac Mini. So this Mac Mini, you can reasonably expect even faster export times. And you also can expect the timeline to work at least as smooth, if not smoother than on here. And I will mention I've owned the M1 Max, all spec'd out version of the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And that was great as well. Overall, it was not that much quicker than this M1 Pro. And this M1 Pro costs significantly less. So it's a fabulous deal. Total time was less than two minutes to export that. So before I conclude this video, I do want to talk about 
one more aspect of how to decide on what video editing hardware is right for you. So I encourage you to consider the phrase time is money. What does time is money mean? Basically, this means how much do you value in your time? What dollar value do you assign to each hour of your time? I like to do this type of analysis whenever I consider what video editing hardware I'm going to purchase or upgrade to. I want to figure out, is it worth it or not? So I did some math and for this past year, I edited approximately 100 videos and the average editing time per video was approximately four hours. Some of those videos took much, much longer, especially if they were longer videos or had some very detailed graphics that took a lot of work to create. And then some of those videos only took a couple hours, especially if they were ones that were mostly me talking without a lot of video layers involved. So with this video editing hardware that I worked with, if I was able to edit those videos at an average of four hours per video, that would be approximately 400 hours a year I spent video editing. But then I looked at some less efficient hardware that I could work with. I looked at some average specs out there and the approximate amount of time it would take me to edit a video if I was using those instead of this hardware. And I came out with approximately five hours. I estimated it would take about 25% longer to edit on lower powered hardware. So if I'm editing just a few videos per year, that extra hour per video is really not a big deal. But in my case, editing 100 videos per year, that extra hour starts to add up really quickly. In fact, that equals an extra 100 hours a year video editing. So let's say I can get that average laptop for approximately $800. It's very entry level. It's just barely capable of doing the 4K video editing. And then let's compare that to this M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro, which cost approximately $1,600, which is double the price of that budget laptop. The cost difference between those two would be $800, and that cost difference equals 100 hours of editing time. So that means each hour of extra editing time costs me $8 an hour. So the question then becomes, is your time worth more or less than $8 an hour to you? In my case, that was an easy answer. My time is definitely worth more than $8 an hour to me. So for me, that is an easy decision. Getting a $1,600 laptop versus an $800 laptop is an easy choice. Those 100 hours saved per year is well worth it to me. And the way I view time, time is not a renewable resource. Once you've spent that time, you cannot get it back. Now it is worth noting that I also do some of my video editing on a custom spec PC desktop. That desktop is in my studio where I do a lot of my editing, but there are times when I need to edit while I'm on the road away from home or where I don't want to be tied down to my studio desk. Maybe I want to be editing at a different location. Sometimes that can help my creativity if I'm in a different environment at some times, even if it just means standing here at this desk with this MacBook Pro editing. So if you are curious to learn a little more about the hardware I run in my PC editing rig, definitely let me know and I can do a video on that. So I hope you found this video to be helpful. I have included links to all of the equipment I featured in this video today, and I definitely encourage you to check it out. Till we talk again, happy video editing.